what's good everybody? My name is Jay Fatty. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about the art of compression, okay? Because I see a lot of people just throw compressors into their beats and not really know what it's doing. Just like EQ, you want to have a plan of action when using a compressor, okay? So let's get right into it. I got this beat with the homie 8th. I'm going to link him down in the description. You should really go check him out. He's got some really dope samples. All right, so let's just give this a run. A really nice soulful vibe. All right, so there are so many types of compressions and different kinds of compressions that you can do in a mix or a master. But the one that I want you to that I want you to focus on today is glue compression, all right? This is going to help glue all of our sounds together and make it sound more cohesive and more solid product. All right, so let's throw the compressor on the master right now. All right, so if you're not familiar with what a compressor even is, we're just going to go over it real quick. All right, so you got six knobs here. Your threshold, your ratio, your gain, your attack, your release, and then the type. Really just focus on these five ones, the threshold, ratio, gain, attack, and release. All right, so for a glue compressor, you don't need to have crazy attack and crazy release. If you're really just trying to glue your track together, you can kind of have a lower attack and lower release. You're going to want to mess with it, but... Just start lower, something like this. And like I said, we'll mess with the knobs more. Now, your ratio, that depends on how much compression you want on the track, all right? This, if you have a higher ratio, it's going to have more compression in the track, so keep that in mind. And the threshold is going to tell it when the compression is actually going to be active. So you're going to want to bring the threshold back and let it know when to start activating that compression. Okay, so let's bring the ratio up a little bit somewhere around here for right now. And let's mess with this threshold. We already got an attack and release in a nice area. So let's listen. You'll notice when you're pulling back the threshold, the compressor is making the whole track sound quieter. That's because it's 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 squeezing it down. It's literally compressing the waveform of everything, and that's how it's going to glue stuff together. So if you do too much threshold, it's going to sound weak. You see, that's taking too many frequencies out. So we want a good threshold where it's getting quieter, but it's not weak and dull. So maybe, maybe right around there. Now, what we want to do is bring the gain up until it starts to sound a nice volume. So that's giving it a nice volume and it's making all of the elements sound a lot better together because they're squished together more. Not a crazy amount though, like I said. So if you listen to the track without the compressor. Now with it. You can just tell that everything is hitting harder and it just sounds a lot better together. Now that's one way you could do the compressor. That's pretty much all I do on my beats is I'll have this compressor. And then I'll have a soft clipper and a limiter. We're going to get that get to that in a second. But what you can also do is you could do a two compression master chain. All right. So your first compressor, which is the one that we just did, is going to glue your track together. And then the second compressor is going to give it the dynamics, make it louder, make it hit. All right. So what we can do in this chain is we have this compressor right here. Let's throw a soft clipper right underneath it. And then underneath that, we're going to throw a limiter. And then underneath that limiter, we're going to throw another compressor. And then underneath that compressor, one more limiter. All right, so we're going to mute these compressor and limiters at the bottom right now. And we're going to just focus on this soft clipper and this limiter here. 
So what we're doing here is we're going to have our soft clipper and our limiter just act as a ceiling. But we're not going to use this normal ceiling inside the limiter, so we can just get rid of that. Let's bring this saturation knob down to about negative 2.5. That'll give us about 2.5 decibels of headroom on our track. All right. Once we have that, we're going to want to bring the threshold all the way to the left of the soft clipper. That's going to make it a curved clip instead of it being a line when it clips the transients. And now we're going to bring the post up until we see those transients hitting the bottom of that negative 2.5. Actually, let's bring this down to negative 3.5 because we're going to make it louder with that second compressor. So we'll bring it down to about negative 3. We'll do negative 3. All right. So now we want to bring this post up and have those transients hit the bottom of that saturation ceiling. See how the top of those kick transients are hitting that? That's what we want. Now that we have it set to a certain ceiling, we want to go to that second compressor, all right? This one, we're going to bring the attack up higher and the release up higher, okay? And a completely different threshold. Let's see what we can do. So that's sounding really good. We're almost done here. Now we just want to go back to that limiter and set a ceiling on top of this one. Not that regular ceiling. We're going to do the saturation again, but th this time let's put it at negative 2.5 and make sure we can get it to that uh, uh, saturation ceiling that we set because we want there to be headroom. We don't want it to be hit to hit in zero or even clipping. You know what I'm saying? As you can see, just looking at that, that's definitely hitting zero. So we need to bring this down a little bit so we can mess with the gain. So yeah, compressor can be a very, very important tool if you use it correctly. It could completely destroy the sound, like taking away too much dynamics, taking away too many frequencies, squishing the sound too much. You want to make sure you know what you're doing with the compressor. That's why it's very important to actually understand what the tool is doing. That's pretty much it, though. If this video brought you value, please leave a like, hit subscribe, and hit the little bell. Let me know down in the comments what you want me to do next. I really appreciate that. Make sure you stay safe, stay striving, and always be getting it. Much love, y'all. Peace.